dear student you are welcome to my video lecture uh, this is a consecutive uh, fourth lecture on same chapter uh, gears uh, but before it uh, i would like to introduce uh, myself uh, uh, i am professor ashok kumar working in department of mechanical engineering at dr subhas technical campus as what i said earlier uh, this is the fifth, uh, fourth uh, continuous lecture on same chapter gears and this chapter comes in the subject of kinematics and the theory of machines uh, this subject specially offered uh, in uh, semester 5th of uh, degree mechanical engineering well uh, uh, up to now uh, we have discussed uh, about the chapter gears like uh, different types of uh, gears uh, gear train uh, then we have also discussed about uh, some relation like uh, length of path of contact, uh, length of arc of contact, we have also discussed about the numbers of terminology and so on, how much uh, the content we have discussed. Now it's time to discuss a little bit uh, ahead and remaining portion uh, that we are going to discuss in this uh, particular video lecture. So first and most important topic that we are going to discuss that is the minimum number of teeth to avoid interference. As we know that, uh, as if you have attended my previous lecture, we know that interference is the phenomena which is generally occur due to uh, if your addendum circle or the height of the radial distance of addendum is a much more than the design value, then what happens? A uh, tip of a particular one pinion will uh, undercut uh, the root uh, of uh, the face of the other machine gear. And uh, by doing so, uh, there will be a gradual removal of material and that entire phenomena, phenomena is generally uh, known as an interference. Basically, there are few ways uh, to which you can avoid uh, the inter uh, interference uh, to be produced in uh, machine gear. Uh, one way is uh, to design uh, a gear pair or machine gear in such a way that uh, the, it should not extend the uh, the length of path of contact uh, beyond certain limit. It is very simple way in which you can avoid easily interference. Secondly, uh, the most important parameter that will directly affect uh, the interference criteria is the uh, selecting the minimum number of teeth. Uh, there is uh, some specific uh, uh, a maximum limit about which uh, or uh, up to which uh, if you are selecting the uh, teeth numbers very carefully, maximum extent uh, uh, you can have the reduction in uh, interference phenomena. So in this uh, topic we will discuss uh, the which should be the exact minimum number uh, so that uh, we can have uh, the minimum interference that is produced uh, during the messing of uh, the gear uh, for the power and motion transmission. Uh, well, uh, generally the relative position of the base circle and the dendritum circle below or above each other mainly depends upon the number of teeth, pressure angle and module. So for involute gear, uh, there are few relations uh, and the relation that means pitch circle radius R should be M into T upon 2. Uh, addendum circle radius, uh, there is uh, some limit and uh, R suffix A should be selected as R plus 1 meter. Whereas this is the standard uh, formula in the proportion that are given in order to have the uh, reduction in interference. Similarly, the addendum circle you should to select like R minus uh, 1.157 uh, in the module, whereas base circle should be R plus 5. So this is few criteria and the parametrical limitation to which uh, if you are designing uh, any pair of spur gear or any kind of the gears then there will be minimum possibility to have an interference. Now consider two involute gears having uh, for example let's 80 and 15 numbers of teeth and the module and pressure angle being 5 mm and 20 degree uh, respectively. So uh, by the relation of pitch circle uh, that means uh, uh, relations of the pitch circle uh, that means module into number of teeth divided by 2 uh, the addendum circle radius, the addendum circle radius, base circle radius all the parameter you can easily find 
by fixing the uh, numbers of teeth 18 and 15 uh, pressure angle and of course module being the 20 degree and chi mm by putting that relevant value on, on the above said relation you are getting that so uh, it is observed that for the gear having 18 numbers of teeth uh, uh, the dendritum circle lies generally above the base circle as the dendritum circle radius is more than, than the base circle radius but for the gear having for example 15 numbers of teeth and you are putting the same value uh, so whatever the base circle you are uh, base circle radius you are getting is more than that the dendritum circle radius so we can say that the base circle lies above the dendritum circle and it uh, implies that uh, the profile of a tooth below the base circle radius is uh, non involute and uh, it is caused to have the phenomena of interference so in summary we can say that uh, in order to avoid interference the minimum number of teeth on gear should be such that uh, it result the base circle to lie exactly below the dead end of circle and this uh, minimum number of teeth are generally known as a critical or uh, we can say that a minimum number of teeth to avoid any interference uh, now uh, look at the figure that you have given exactly it is the uh, we can say that the vector diagram of uh, radius and uh, there is a center O2 uh, and uh, before uh, analyzing and uh, having the specific relation on numbers of teeth uh, let uh, uh, have the few notation uh, for example small t stand for the number of teeth on pinion capital T number of teeth on gear wheel small m stand for the module r that is the pitch circle radius and it can be easily calculate small r is equal to m into small t divided by 2 whereas a capital r that is the pitch circle radius of wheel uh, again it will be the module into capital t upon 2 a capital g stand for the gear ratio and that is equal to capital t upon small t that means uh, it is the ratio of number of teeth on gear wheel to the number of tooth on pinion and that will become capital R upon R and 510 for the pressure angle. Now in order to evaluate the relation of the minimum number of teeth, first of all you have to consider, uh, look at the diagram you have given triangle O2 MP and uh, from the diagram we can have the relation like O2 M square is equal to O2 T square plus uh, p m square uh, minus 2 o 2 p into p m into cos 90 plus 5. So by simplifying and uh, putting the values of o 2 p and p m uh, into the above relation, you are getting the uh, relation like o 2 m square is equal to r square plus small r square uh, sin square 5 minus 2 capital R into small r sin 5 into cos uh, 90 plus 5. Further simplification will give, give the result like O2M square is equal to R square plus R square sin square 5 minus 2 capital R into small r sin 5 minus sin 5 because we know that cos 90 plus 5 that is replaced here in. So ultimately equation will become for the O2M square is equal to R square capital R square plus small r square sin square 5 plus 2 capital R into R uh, sin square. Of five. So ultimately, uh, still, uh, if uh, you are solving and simplifying this relation uh, for the O two M square, that will becomes uh, capital R square bracket one plus small R upon R in a small bracket small R upon capital R plus two into sine square five. Now, uh, uh, by uh, removing uh, both of the side square, we can have the O2M is equal to R under root 1 plus small r upon capital R uh, bracket small r upon capital R plus 2 bracket sin square 5. Uh, by putting the values of the radius of uh, each circle radius of gear wheel in the above relation, you will have the, at the end O2M is equal to M into capital T upon 2 under root. Uh, 1 plus uh, small t upon capital T uh, bracket small t upon capital T plus 2 into uh, sin square 5. Now, uh, this is the relation of uh, center of uh, particularly we can say that the center of gear wheel and the uh, uh, point M. Now, uh, 
it actually indicates the maximum or the limiting radius of NADM circle of wheel in order to avoid the interference. That means O2M by putting the relevant values of all the basic parameters in relation of O2M and whatever the, uh, the magnitude you are getting uh, is equal to O2M uh, you are getting. Uh, uh, this is the limitation. Above and over, you are not uh, designing by taking more than that value for the design purpose. Otherwise, it causes them interference. So, O2M here in is the limiting factor uh, up to which you can uh, design any gear. Now, uh, for a moment, think that uh, small s of x w be the maximum standard NNM of wheel to avoid interference, and it is given by. Uh, small a sub x w is equal to capital a sub x w into n uh, generally small or capital a sub x w is the addendum coefficient of wheel now maximum standard addendum of wheel uh, to avoid interference should be given like a sub x w is equal to o2 m minus o2 p uh, by putting the values of a small a sub x w from the above relation you will have capital A W into M is equal to O2 M minus O2 P. Again O2 P is replaced by uh, the pitch circle radius capital R so ultimate equation will become A sub X W into M uh, that is equal to uh, O2 M minus R. Uh, by putting the values of O2 M that we have already uh, derived in the previous slide uh, so that the value of O2 M should be placed over here and uh, ultimate equation will become a w uh, s of x w into m is equal to m into capital T upon 2 under root 1 plus uh, small t upon capital T bracket small t upon capital T plus 2 into sin square 5 minus m into capital T by uh, 2. Further simplification uh, by uh, keeping outside the common uh, term uh, you will have the relation like uh, m upon capital 2 upon 2 under, uh, in bracket under root 1 plus small t upon capital T uh, in bracket small t upon capital T plus 2 sin square 5 minus 1. By simplification this relation uh, will give at the end uh, the capital T uh, is equal to 2 into a sub x w under, uh, upon, uh, uh, under root 1 plus 1 upon g bracket 1 upon g plus 2 uh, sin square 5 minus 1. So this is the relation which gives the minimum number of teeth required on gear wheel. If we are calculating the minimum numbers of teeth uh, which is required on pinion in order to remove or we can say that the avoid of an interference then it will be very similar as that uh, of what we have derived in case of gear wheel. So small t stands for the number of teeth on special opinion and by adopting the same procedure as that what we have adopted for the gear wheel, the ultimate relation will become small t is equal to 2 into AP under root upon under root 1 plus capital T upon small t uh, bracket capital T upon t plus 2 sin square 5 over minus of 1. So this is what uh, the relation that indicates that the minimum numbers uh, of uh, the teeth either on pin or uh, pinion or we can say that the gear will select, uh, selected in such a way that it, it goes to have the remove or the reduction or total avoid of an interference. Now after that uh, look at the slide uh, and uh, you have given uh, the method to avoid interference. Uh, earlier I said that uh, there are numbers of methods through which you can have uh, avoid uh, you can avoid an interference between two machine gear. Uh, so this these are the few ways through which you can avoid totally an interference. Uh, look at this screen. Uh, if we increase uh, the size of the base circle, the involute curve become more and more flat. And if the radius of base circle becomes infinitely large, as in case of rare. Uh, rack uh, and pinion assembly, its uh, profile becomes straight. So uh, ultimately, uh, in case of rack or the infinite radius types of gear like uh, rack and pinion assembly, it merely chance to have the more interference because there is no to maintain, uh, there is no any kind of maintenance of the tooth profile, uh, involute tooth profile. So where are uh, the involute tooth profile are missing, there are more chance to have an interference. 
So there are a few methods we are waiting there for us to look at this screen. First, first method that uh, you have suggested is the modified profile of tooth. Uh, suppose whenever the radius of base circle of gear is more than that of the radius of dead item circle, then portion of the profile below the base circle will be non involved and uh, this is the condition through which interference uh, may be possible to have set up. So in order to avoid the interference, the portion of the flank of the pinion uh, tooth which uh, generally lies below the base circle and the portion of the face of the wheel tooth which generally engage with the pinion is made cycloidal in, instead of the involuting shape. So here in uh, one uh, more suggestion that is, uh, is that uh, in order to avoid uh, an interference, uh, just profile of the gear should be made uh, as a cycloidal in place of involute. And thus uh, in that way the profile of teeth is partially involute curve and partially cycloidal curve. Uh, you can see from the figure and uh, this is the very simple way to avoid modif uh, generally we can say that in an interference. Uh, second, uh, uh, the, uh, we can say that the option for the reduction of uh, the end interference is modified addendum of pinion and bit. In that way, you just have to modify addendum of both of uh, machine uh, gears like pinion and wheel. Uh, we know that if the length of the path of contact, uh, for example, KL is less than the uh, design length of path of contact MN, then there is no any kind of uh, possibility to set up an interference. But you are accepting uh, your length of path of contact beyond the length of path of contact of MN. It may be possible that the interference will be strictly produced there. So in case of length of path of contact KL is if greater than MN, of course the interference will be taking place. So in order to uh, shorten the length of path of contact, just you have to uh, uh, perform like addendum circle of the wheel uh, crosses the point of tangency uh, like M. That means uh, uh, addendum circle of the wheel uh, should always uh, crosses the common point of contact between two machine gear. If you are achieving this condition, then and then your path of length of contact of uh, two machine gear will always. Uh, less than that of the design uh, suggested uh, design the uh, length of path of contact. Look at the figure in this case, the addendum of wheel is reduced until the point K uh, lies inside the uh, path, total path M. To retain the total depth of tooth, uh, the addendum of wheel is increased by amount equal to decrease amount of addendum. And simultaneously, the addendum of pinion uh, is increased and the tendendum of opinion is reduced by same amount to retain the total working depth of the tooth. So with, with uh, these changes of addendum and tendendum, just in case of opinion side, you have to increase the tendendum and uh, you have to reduce the same amount of addendum, you will have the point, uh, you, you can maintain the total depth of uh, tooth. So in that way, uh, whatever the, the path that is stretching by the beach point, uh, which will be the always less than the suggested design path and there would be no any kind of chance to produce an interference. So this method suggests that by modifying addenda or opinion and will uh, we can eliminate uh, the interference. In this method it follows that uh, there are no any kind of changes of pitch circle diameter, base circle diameter or even uh, pressure angle and the center, center distance. Thus you, you, you have to change Adnetum radius as well as the tentatum radius. In that way, uh, generally we can avoid an interference. Generally, uh, this method is not useful uh, where uh, the equal sizes of metal gear, uh, metal gears are to be used. Uh, the extra addendum of gear which cause interference is removed and the modified tooth profile is generally called a stop tooth profile. So this is the second option through which you can have the, uh, you can avoid uh, uh, the phenomena of interference. Third option for the an interference uh, removal of an interference is the modified center distance between pinion and wheel. Now the center distance of involute gear can be varied within uh, some particular limits without affecting the law of gearing. 
so if the center of distance is increased over its standard center distance then its pressure angle phi is also increased you can see from the figure if you are increasing the center distance between pinion and gear of course uh, the pressure angle of particular that uh, both of the wheels or messing gear will of course will be increased so with this effect the length of corresponding uh, to interference points like m and n changes to new points m dash and n and dash so it allows the path of contact KL not to extend the beyond the new interference point M dash and N and dash. So ultimately uh, yeah, by increasing the center distance here we can increase the length of, uh, length of path of contact uh, from MN to M, M dash and N dash. So which uh, generally give the permission uh, to extend your path uh, that means length of path of contact. So in that case, uh, by increasing the distance, uh, we can have the avoidance of an interface. Now, uh, one more point that we are going to discuss, that is effect of center distance on velocity ratio. That means, uh, uh, what changes is to be possible if you are increasing or decreasing even center distance on velocity ratio. Now, for, to understand this theory, you have to consider two involute gear messing with each other. Look at the screen. And uh, as we have discussed, uh, the according uh, law of gearing, uh, according to law of gearing, uh, we can have the angular velocity ratio like omega 1 upon omega 2 is equal to O2 p upon O1 p, and uh, it will be always equal to O2 n upon O1 n. So over here, uh, you have given one gear and pinion, uh, center of gear 1 is O1 and uh, gear 2 or pinion is O2. And uh, effective radius, uh, there is the RB that you have given. Now, uh, let the center of rotation of gear 1 is little bit shifted from O1 to O1 dash. Then, uh, meanwhile, the beach point is also shifted from P to P dash. Uh, so this is uh, here uh, just uh, uh, we are changing the center distance from O1 to O1 days and we, uh, let's see what the effect of if you are increasing or decreasing center distance what happens in the relation of velocity ratio. So now new velocity ratio according to law of gear will become omega 1 upon, upon omega 2 days will, will be equal to O2 P days upon O1 days P or uh, days. And ultimately, we know that O2 P dash is equal to O2 N dash, and O1 dash uh, P dash is always equal to O1 dash M dash. Now, O2 N dash and O2 N are the radius of the circle of gear 2. So, ultimately, it can be replaced by RB, whereas O1 M dash uh, is with the radius of the circle of gear 1, so it is also replaced by small r of B. So by putting that value on, uh, on the above uh, in a relation of a ratio of angular velocity, so ultimately you are getting that O2 n dash upon O1 dash m dash is equal to O2 n upon O1 n, and that is equal to R capital R b sub, uh, capital R suffix b minus uh, small r suffix b. So by putting that uh, uh, relation, uh, ultimately you have the uh, ratio of angular velocity like omega 1 upon omega 2 that is equal to omega 1 upon omega 2 dash is equal to O2 p upon O1 p and ultimately it will finally becomes O2 p dash upon O1 dash p dash that is constant. So here it is proved that if we change the center distance within a few permissible limits of involute gears it will not affect the velocity ratio because over here you can see that omega 1 and omega 2 uh, and omega 1 upon omega 2 days both are having the equal magnitude so if you are increasing little bit uh, center distance or decreasing the little bit center distance there will be no longer any kind of change in uh, especially velocity ratio <coughs> but uh, uh, one thing is that uh, pressure angle is going to be increased from 5 to 5 days now in case of uh, cycloidal gearing, the pitch circle must be tangent to each other in order to satisfy the law of gearing. That means center distance between two gears must be maintained constant otherwise it will affect the velocity ratio. So uh, we can say that uh, effect of center distance especially on involute gear permit little bit to change in the center distance between both of the gears but if uh, the gear profile uh, is of cycloidal 
then uh, there is an adverse effect, uh, there will be no longer uh, remain the same angular velocity. So this is uh, some limitation inherent with uh, the tooth having the cycloidal profile. Now after that, uh, there is a point number 4 and that is the red sheet. Basically, uh, uh, suppose you are modifying addendum of pinion and wheel, uh, we can eliminate the interference as what we have discussed earlier. But in this method, the random of the wheel is reduced and the random is increased by equal amount to retain the total depth of the tooth. Uh, in that particular in case, you know, avoid to uh, avoid an interference, ultimately you have to keep the total depth of a tooth uh, as a constant parameter. Just you have the flexibility to increase or decrease the endendum and endendum. But the picture, uh, by doing so, you are not changing the pitch circle diameter, just you are changing the endendum and the endendum length or the depth. So, the, uh, it, it, it may be uh, possible that uh, uh, the tooth thickness along the pitch circle of the wheel definitely will be reduced. So, similarly, in pinion, uh, to modify the endendum, we increase the endendum, and the endendum is reduced. Uh, by the equal amount to retain the total depth of the tooth. So, uh, in order to uh, avoid an interference on pinion side too, uh, uh, we are increasing endodem and decreasing dendodem. Uh, over here also tooth thickness, uh, pitch circle diameter will never change and due to that uh, the tooth thickness along the pitch circle of the pinion is going to be increased. So over here basically what happens, uh, the pinion and gear are missing in order to avoid the interference you are increasing uh, endendum and decreasing uh, dendendum uh, in, in gear side whereas you are uh, decreasing endendum and de uh, increasing endendum in case of the pinion. So ultimately by doing so you are changing, not changing pitch circle diameter but you are changing the tooth thickness on respect to uh, on, on relevant uh, gear uh, uh, wheel as well as the pinion. So over here uh, look at this screen uh, by doing so uh, a rec cutter for generating pinion and wheel uh, you have given the actual thickness of the teeth on gear length is equal to the width of the tooth space on the rec uh, cutter and therefore generating pinion with increase of, uh, amount of tooth thickness the pitch line for the rec cutter is AA to get uh, more tooth thickness on the pinion and uh, of course uh, by in order to uh, decrease the phenomena or avoid an interference uh, we are uh, changing the endendum and endendum and by performing this ultimately uh, we are decreasing the thickness on pinion side and increasing the thickness of uh, gear side but uh, actually the, as per the standard design the thickness of both of the teeth should be always remain same so ultimately here in, in, in order to have the same thickness uh, the thickness on pinion should be increased and uh, uh, it will be increased uh, through uh, mathematical relation like uh, T suffix P that means thickness of pinion should be 5 by 2 plus 2E ten five into M where uh, we can say that E is equal to or red set. Similarly, uh, uh, in case of uh, we can say that uh, uh, wheel side, uh, the thickness of the wheel will be pi by 2 minus 2e ten phi into m. So, for cutting teeth on the pinion, uh, the pitch line of the rec cutter is shifted by amount uh, e uh, towards the top of the rec cutter to get the larger tooth thickness, whereas uh, in, in for the uh, on, on same gear wheel, uh, just uh, we have to uh, remove or we can say that the rec cutter is shifted by amount E towards the bottom of the rec cutter to get uh, reduced to thickness TW. In that way, by that uh, uh, amount uh, for TP and TW, uh, by putting the re uh, relevant values, you will have the equal thickness on both of the pinion as well as uh, we can say that the gear wheel. Now, after that red shift, uh, we are going to discuss numbers of teeth on uh, equivalence per gear. Basically, uh, this concept is very much useful uh, while you are designing and analyzing any kind of helical gear. 
so in this particular uh, helical gear uh, you have given and viewed along the normal plane so uh, it can, uh, while uh, you are viewing from the normal plane it will look like uh, uh, ss power gear generally uh, transferring helical gear into equivalent power gear it will simplify the analysis of a helical gear and that's why uh, the view point uh, is been taken from the normal plane uh, because ultimately we have to analyze helical gear in terms of the spur gear now uh, the resulting view will become an ellipse uh, with a minor axis r and major axis uh, will be the one upon cos alpha because we are looking that uh, same gear assembly from the normal plane so ultimately helical gear will become equivalent spur gear having uh, if you are rota looking to rotate that uh, helical gear to the normal plane it will look like an ellipse with minor and major axis uh, r and one upon cos alpha uh, respectively now uh, look at the diagram uh, you have given that an ellipse with minor axis r one upon cos alpha whereas the minor axis is r and there is a pitch cylinder of helical gear of 5 pitch cylinder of equivalent spur gear also you are looking that the 5 into de there is a normal section nn of course there is a uh, horizontal section tt is also given and the pitch circle of equivalent spur gear radius r suffix e is also given now uh, the profile of the helical gear tooth in uh, normal plane is same as that of the spur gear having the pitch circle radius r e which is equal to the radius of curvature of the ellipse at point p so we can in mathematical relation we can write like effective radius or we can say that the uh, gear having the pitch circle radius like that it is the ratio of semi major axis square upon a semi minor axis so ultimately it will become r upon cos alpha whole square upon r by simplifying uh, and modifying that uh, relation you will have effective radius or we can say that the pitch circle radius will become r upon uh, cos square alpha so ultimately uh, from that effective radius one can have the effective diameter or the pitch circle diameter and it will become d upon cos square alpha so uh, this is what uh, the basic uh, the effective or pitch circle diameter relation generally helical gear is equivalent to an imaginary spur gear uh, which is in the normal plane nn that we have already discussed and the number of teeth on equivalent spur gear is generally known as the equivalent number of teeth or the virtual number of teeth or formative number of teeth so in order to uh, the virtual uh, calculate the teeth for the number of teeth for the virtual number of teeth on spur gear uh, we should to calculate first module and module is always equal to pitch circle diameter or upon number of teeth so by converting uh, this relation in terms of uh, the numbers of teeth uh, it will have the relation like uh, uh, d suffix e upon m suffix n and by putting the values of d suffix e is equal to d upon cos square alpha that we have already derived in previous slide over here the final equation for the numbers of effective teeth will become d upon m suffix t into cos cube alpha because mn is replaced by uh, mt cos alpha so now module of gear, uh, helical gear will be m suffix t is equal to d by t or we can say that uh, the t or number of teeth or effective number of teeth for special helical gear will be uh, d upon m suffix t so from the above the relation we can uh, write like that the effective number of teeth t suffix e is equal to t upon cos cube alpha so this is what uh, about the numbers of uh, teeth uh, that is uh, equivalent to uh, numbers of teeth on particular spur gear. Uh, so entire lecture, dear student, we have discussed a lot about uh, 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 many theories. Uh, we have covered uh, the basic uh, relation between the velocity ratio uh, which is affected by the central distance. Also we have discussed about uh, uh, the, we can say that uh, virtual numbers or the effective numbers at the end. Uh, thank you very much for your kind of attendance. Thank you. Thank you very much.